Hello, friends and neighbors. This is Pastor Stephen Wall coming to you again from St. John St. Peter Lutheran Church in Cleveland, Wisconsin, as we dive into God's Word for comfort, assurance, and guidance for our lives as Christians. This coming Sunday, I'll be preaching again on the, the Old Testament lesson from Isaiah chapter 25. And uh, I wanted to give you a little primer then for our worship this Sunday. Our gospel reading, which ties in with that Old Testament reading, both of them talking about a banquet that God has prepared. Uh, but in the gospel, we're in Matthew chapter 22, picking up right where we left off last week. Jesus is in Jerusalem. It's Tuesday of Holy Week. Uh, Jesus is teaching in the temple courts. And the chief priests and the elders are growing more and more opposed to Jesus and looking for ways to get rid of him. In fact, that's what it says at the end of chapter 21. It says, although they were looking for a way to arrest him, they were afraid of the crowds because the people regarded him as a prophet. And so we pick up in chapter 22 with Jesus telling another parable. I'm just going to read that parable and then we'll talk through it a little bit. But the parable is the, uh, the parable of the wedding banquet. And so in Matthew 22, it says, Jesus spoke to them again in parables. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent out his servants to summon those who were invited to the wedding banquet, but they did not want to come. Then he sent out other servants and said, Tell those who are invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fattened cattle have been butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. What an awesome invitation. But those who were invited paid no attention and went off, one to his own farm, another to his business. They had better things to do than to celebrate with the king. The rest seized the king's servants, mistreated them, and killed them. This ties in with that previous parable of the wicked tenants who killed uh, and beat up the, the prophets and then sought to kill the son of the king. As a result, the king was very angry. He sent his army and killed those murderers and burned their town. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. So go to the main crossroads and invite as many as you find to the wedding banquet. Those servants went out to the roads and gathered together everyone they found, both good and bad. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. He said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without wearing wedding clothes? The man was speechless. Then the king told the servants, Tie him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. I remember when I was younger, reading this parable, hearing this parable, and thinking, what's the deal? Why is the king so upset with this man who's not wearing wedding clothes? I mean, after all, didn't the king send out his servants to the highways and byways, out to the crossroads to gather everybody in? And so what if this guy doesn't have wedding clothes? The king invited him. Why is he so upset that he doesn't have wedding clothes? And the reason is that in the culture, in the custom of that day, if there were a, a royal wedding and somebody came to that royal wedding, the wedding clothing would be provided. I suppose it's similar to uh, if, if a couple is getting married today and the wedding party, uh, maybe the wedding couple says, okay, we're all wearing tuxes and this is the color of the, uh, the tie, the bow tie we're going to wear and the the bridesmaids are all going to wear the same dress. And, and so the wedding couple provides the clothing for the wedding party. It's similar to that. 
And just like if you had a bridesmaid who absolutely refused, no, I'm not going to wear that. I'm going to wear my own clothes and then showed up in street clothes at the wedding. So this guy comes into the wedding celebration. He's received the invitation, but when he gets there, he refuses to join the celebration. He refuses to put on the robe that was provided, the wedding clothes. In other words, he wanted to benefit from the meal, everything that was there, but he refused to honor the one who had invited him. You know, we draw parallels between this and what God provides to us. He sent his servants, the king did, he sent his servants out to invite everyone. And it's true that God's word goes out to the entire world. He wants all people to be invited, all people to hear the gospel invitation, that they can come to him and have their sins forgiven. They come to Jesus Christ, who died, who gave his life for the sins of the world, an atoning sacrifice for the sins of the entire world. But to come and want to join the celebration, but to refuse the wedding clothes, that would be like somebody hearing that invitation and thinking, oh, you know, what a great time. I could go to church, I could hang out, I could meet lots of friends, but not really buying into, not really accepting, not really believing what God offers in that invitation, which is his righteousness, the righteousness of Jesus Christ, that robe of righteousness that we receive from him. To refuse that, to want to take part in all the outward activities of of the church, and yet to refuse the righteousness that God offers, to refuse to confess sins to God, to repent of them. That was what that man in the wedding uh, celebration was doing when he refused the wedding clothes. For you and for me, we have that gracious invitation from God to celebrate the wedding supper of his son. How often in the Bible is, uh, is heaven described as this grand celebration, a wedding banquet with Jesus as the bridegroom and the church being his bride. And so we have that picture again. But if we think we can get in the doors without accepting the robe of Christ's righteousness, we will be thrown out into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Friend, neighbor, repent of your sins. God is calling you to celebrate, to celebrate what Jesus, his son, has done for you in purchasing you with his own blood shed on the cross. Repent of your sins and turn to him for that full and free forgiveness. Gladly accept his righteousness, which is so much better than our righteousness, which falls short in every sense. Our righteousness is is tattered rags. But Christ's righteousness is a beautiful robe which drapes across our shoulders and covers over all our sins. Welcome gladly that robe of righteousness that God gives to you. And then celebrate, celebrate the wedding supper of the Lamb, the wedding supper of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Jesus, your blood and righteousness, my beauty, your my glorious dress, mid flaming worlds in these arrayed, with joy shall I lift up my head. 
shall I stand in that great day? Who can a word against me say? Fully through you absolved I am from sin and fear, from guilt and shame. Lord, I believe your precious blood, which at the Jesus.